Hello everybody, and welcome back to brand new Dead Overflow video. Yes, I know, no face cam today, unfortunately, but don't worry about it. It's going to come in the next videos, I promise that. But if you're new here, please make sure to subscribe because we're trying to hit 100k by the end of the year. And I know you aren't subscribed. I can see your button not being subscribed. So please just click it. We're trying to hit 100k by the end of the year. And also, it is a win-win situation for you and me. You get to learn stuff and I get a subscriber. So please do it. Also, make sure to join my Discord server. Link is in the description for that as well. We are at like, I don't know, 618 members. So that's pretty epic. Also, today's video is going to be about a vulnerability I found on a very popular website. And just like the last time we did it, if you actually guess the amount of money which I was rewarded for this bug, you will get a free course from me, free game hacking course from me, as well as access to my platform, Aveno, which is everything in the description. You can check it out to find out more about it. And you get that for lifetime access for free. So just make sure to get it. Comment down below after you see the vulnerability and, you know, give me your thoughts. Last week's winner was, or last video's winner was Jesse. And basically, uh i will give them or her or him i don't know who who this is uh, i will give them access to the game hacking course as well as the bug bounty course as well as aveno and this is a shout out which i promised so make sure to comment down below what do you think the actual payout was and also if you want to learn hacking you know get the bug bounty course for yourself but also if you want to learn game hacking get the game hacking course because we actually include the example scripts i'm going to tell i'm going to call them but you know what that actually means we include that as well for for real games and to top it all off whoever gets it by the end of the week will be picked as a lucky winner to be collaborating with me on the next video so if you want to end up in my video make sure to get it and uh, i think most of the students will be picked because i'm just going to go back and forth and also have a no everything is in the description now let's go with the video so here is the website which we can see and by the way this is a blog post i wrote on february 13th 2023 about this vulnerability i did not disclose how much money i was paid here but just so you know, you can get it. Link is in the description if you want to actually read it more besides this video. But the title went bypassing same site equals lax cookie restrictions to perform CSRF, resulting in a horizontal privilege escalation via poor email verification mechanism. Uh, that is a very technical title, uh, except for a grammar error right over here. But don't worry, it was me two years ago. But what I'm actually going to show you is that the CSRF issue I found was very complex because it bypassed same site equals lax cookie restrictions. And if you don't know what that is, I'll actually explain that in today's video. So this is the reenact this is like the, the reenacted uh, version of the website. It's remade by me. And there is a login functionality, which I forgot to add on the main page, but don't worry about it. There is already a one account named that overflow and the password is super secret. So I'm not going to tell you that. And you can see that we logged in successfully. But when it comes to CSRF, you know that where CSRF can arise and you might immediately see the update email thing here. Why not open it? Well, why not? Okay. So you, I usually inspect elements and go to network and just analyze what happens after I, for example, enter a new email. So let's just enter test at test.com and let's update email. And this is what happens. We send a request to profile. It is a post request and we send form data, which contains email key and the email, actual email value. So that's pretty interesting. But if you take a look at the set cookie variable or set cookie header, you can see that the session is being set, of course, but it's HTTP only and the same site is equivalent to lax. So what does actually that mean? Well, let me explain to you. When you send a cross-site request now, post cross-site request, it will not include the session. It will tell you, hey, you need to log in first, nor this will work on the iframe. You need to log in in the iframe as well. So click jacking is definitely harder but csrf issues are harder because if you send a post request from another domain to this domain regardless if it's localhost or not it will not work because the session will never be included just because of same site equals lax and it's very straightforward also stealing cookies is definitely a bit harder now since we have this http only meaning that it will not be included you, you can't go document.cookie and you know get that stuff from the console i think at least you can get it yeah you see document.cookie it's not really there because it's http only so also makes xss harder but this is a very protected website and it was back then back in 2020 back in 2023 when i was starting to research this but then i had an 
I had a weird idea. And this video is mostly about you having weird ideas and some of them will work. Like after you see this, you'll understand why this was weird. When I looked at this request, I realized, okay, so this is a post request, meaning I cannot send post requests. But what was interesting to me is if you sent a get request to, for example, the profile, you send a get request, you are logged in. Okay, but if you send a post request, you are not going to be logged in. That's what the same site lacks thing is for. So I was like, hmm, what if, remember, the test at test.com is the email. I was like, hmm, what if I just add email parameter here and put dead overflow or like my other email at gmail.com and send this to myself? I click enter. Okay, why did this work? I mean, current email is now dead overflow. And bear in mind, if I refresh, uh, oh, actually, it doesn't quite update it. Oh, man, I didn't make my website quite vulnerable. <laughs> okay, ah, I know why I didn't refresh it. Uh, okay, let me just set it back and let me go back uh, out and update email. And there it is. What I did is when I refreshed it, I sent another post request to update it to test.com because the last request was a post request. So don't worry about it. But as you can see, just to verify it, I'll put... Um, I'll put two here, like I'll just put some numbers. And if I go here and refresh, you can see it's being updated. So why did this work? Of course, this is a CSRF vulnerability that allows now the attacker to, for example, log out, like log out, go to forgot password, and then enter his own email. But what would the attacker do is they would send the victim this link. The victim would, for example, it will be masked, of course, and the, once the victim opens it, it will redirect him to this, and this is where the attacker would put his own email, and it would effectively update the victim's email, and now the attacker can put his own email right here, get the reset link, log into the victim's account. Pretty scary, right? I mean, that's just what happens when you screw up, but why did this work? Honestly, that was one of the questions I kept on asking myself. Why, once you get this email right here, it works? Well, it's just negligence mostly by the backend developers. Uh, I did do some stuff right here to actually show you, but my honest guess is that it doesn't really get, like, doesn't really care which request is getting. I did basically this post just to show you guys what, what is the correct way. You do not need this. You do not need to get requests to work like this. But I think what it actually was working is it didn't care which type of request it was, whether it was get, whether it was post, whether it was patch, delete, I don't know. But, you know, these requests come, these types of HTTP requests cannot be in forms, but it can be in a fetch request. So what was my idea is if it was just basically blindly trusting it and getting the args to basically get the email, it would work the same way as it was as it would work in forms, of course. The language, I don't know which was the backend written in. I don't know which what which one it was, but based on this, I think it was Java or maybe JavaScript. But this was my Python like recreation of it. And I think this was how it was. It didn't care which request type it was. It was just basically going to blindly trust it. And you can find everything here in the blog post. Link is in the description for that. And I didn't state how much money I get rewarded for it. But to summarize it, I basically wrote, it may seem hard to find bugs for even or even escalate some bugs that you may label as unusable. But keep in mind, <laughs> but just keep in your head that coming up with ways to exploit something, trying out, failing is still security research. That is a gold mine advice right there. And even though this seemed like a silly idea, why would you try it? Well, if you don't try it, then you will never know whether it works or not, because this is internet and computers can sometimes be unpredictable. But they're, they're most times unpredictable. But you, once you got the black box thing, you don't know what it's going to happen. In the black box environments, computers are unpredictable as hell. And this was one of the examples. I don't know the code of the web application, but I still managed to broke it. Thank you so much for watching this little silly video. Make sure to subscribe. Of course, like this video. Comment down below what do you think was the payout for this. And yeah, as always, peace.